this functional vent, I'm in the process of setting up a pole for a meter base, and of course that is a meter base. Now this is very, very old school. As we go along, back off a little bit, we come up to the weather head. When was the last time you saw a weather head like that one? If you said you've never seen one, that is old school. This pole that I've got is rotted at the base. Let's take a quick look at that. As you can see, I have just installed a 15 foot uh, pole for a, a meter. It took me five hours to dig out that hole. That hole is five feet deep, which is what's required by the uh, electric company. I'll build my meter, uh, my breaker box, meter base, my pole that goes up, and the weather head uh, a little bit later. In fact, I haven't even bought the parts yet. What I did was using a throw ball, I set a rope up here. And by the way, that rope is variable. I could have pulled it up higher. I just left it where it's at right now because that would work for me. Right there. I came down and I used a bowline. That's a bowline. And a piece of chain to hook that. Um, that's my snatch block right there. And then I put my continuous rope puller rope tied approximately halfway onto the pole. Then it comes back down and it goes to my rope puller. This other rope that you see in front of me, which is goes over here, see on the ladder, and it comes up. When I was lifting this thing up, what was happening was the pole was moving to the right and I needed it back over to the left, so that's why that rope is pulled to the left. What I did was I punched my hole into the ground five feet. Then I dug out this little area right here so that I could pull the pole in, and as I started to lift up, it would start to go down. All that water that you see in there, that white creamy stuff, that water is, um, I'm, I put the mud that I dug out of the bottom, the bottom uh, three and a half feet of uh, mud is back in there and I put water into it and I've been mixing it with this stir stick just working it up and down like settling concrete in order to get that clay to adhere and hold this pole. So what I did was I had my pole, I had the butt of the pole down here and the length of it coming back this way and then I started my lift using the snatch block assembly that you see up here and I also use the Kubota tractor to help pick up on it just to make the lifting process a little bit faster. But as far as the Kubota goes, I could only use it a very short amount and after that I didn't have a way to keep the uh, pole on the Kubota and so I couldn't use it anymore. Once I got it into position like this, it still wasn't quite right, so I wrapped a rope around it and a stick and I twisted it and it fell right into place and life was beautiful. I want to show you something before I close this down. This is really important. This rope right here is the rope that was used on the seven hour tree. Do you see those bumps? See there's one here and there's one right here. It's light is not real good for see the bump and then right up here I'll rotate it slowly see that this rope needs to be retired this rope right now is damaged I went ahead and used it for this lift because it wasn't a big deal I have some very small trees back here these trees will be serving suggestions with this rope you don't want to use um, this rope on any kind of a tree that's not a serving suggestion. Inspect 
all of your equipment before you use it. Don't ever use something without first looking it over. I'll do a white paper to explain exactly what I did on this. And the knots, everything up there, every single knot except one, is either a bowline or a uh, half hitch. It's the only knots I used on this. On the throw ball, I used a sheet, S-H-E-E-T-B-E-N-D, a sheet bend when I was pulling my rope over up here at the top. And I will demonstrate all those. Using my throw ball, I put a rope up high in the tree on a real good piece of branch. I came down and I used a bowline on my snatch block and a little bit of chain to hold the snatch block in place. And then I, I came down to about halfway on the log and I wrapped around it and that's what I used to actually do the physical lift. And I will do a white paper on exactly what was going on. The actual raising of this utility, or this, it's going to have a meter base put on it. It's a service drop. The actual time it took to have this put on, from the time I started lifting until the time it was up, was probably about 30 minutes. I didn't time it, but it, it went smoothly. There was no there was no problems anywhere. I, I think I said that this pole is 20 feet long. The minimum requirement for a pole is 16 feet. If the thing is in the ground 5 feet, that means the maximum height of the pole is 11 feet. On any type of a place where trucks might be coming in, and yes, there's a transformer to the extreme left down the way a bit. There's a power line behind me that, that goes down to that transformer. If those service trucks came in and I didn't have at least 13.6, which is the uh, lowest minimum for anything like bridges and stuff like that, I would end up risking having them grab my service and rip it out and maybe tearing down this pole as well. So I went with a 20 foot pole so that I know that that little thing right there that the service will tie onto is at least 15 feet above the ground. So I have two extra feet of lift. Whenever you're out in the country and you're doing stuff like this, Make sure that you um, think ahead, say, you know, if a service truck came in here to work on something, how high would it be? Those service trucks are huge. I mean, they have um, man lifts on them that reach up to 55 feet. They are not small. So you need that 13.6 so when everything's folded down, it will cruise under very safely. As I've said, I'm going to do a white paper and I'll show you the knots that I used as well. Alright, here's the first of the white papers. We have our pole, which is this. This is what we're going to stand upright. We have our lift point approximately 50% from each end. We have our hole, which is 5 feet deep. Now that's going to meet standard. On this tree, we're up about Oh, 22 to 25 feet. The reason being is because we may have to pick this pole physically a little bit up to set it into the hole. If we do, we need to be able to do that. The pole is 25 feet or 20 feet long, so it's like 10 feet from here to there. So this needs to be just a little bit above that. And when I say above that, remember my rope is hooked up here but I want to be able to get it out. I'm not going to cut this tree to, down to get the rope out. So I need to have my snatch block a little bit lower than this so that when I pull this up and I set into the hole, I can get my snatch box, my snatch block down without having to cut the tree. Now this goes over to the uh, rope puller, which you saw earlier. Now if you remember, 
I had to put a rope on this and I had to pull it depending upon which view I had either to the left or to, or to the viewers left or right depending upon where I was standing in relationship to the orientation of this pole in order to get it into place. Now the knots that I used this is going to be a boland uh, correction this is going to be a uh, half uh, double half hitch up here I used a boland to make my loop to pull this tight then on this on the snatch block I used chain this goes down to the rope puller when this thing started to swing off to the side I threw a loop around it tied a boland and then pulled it to the side now right down here I don't show this in this drawing but I excavated this down about 10 maybe 11 inches not quite a foot but very close so that as I started to lift this piece right here would start pivoting up to fall inside if you remember I said that what I did in order to get this to go ahead and fall was I I took some rope I wrapped around this and then I wrapped around a stick actually pretty good substantial like three inch in diameter oak I, I lashed this to the stick I twisted it and it fell right down into the hole what had happened was this butt of the tree right here slid into this and as I lifted it up it was pivoting right here like this so when I twisted it it then fell into the hole and came into an upright position now when I lifted this thing I was tied into a tree this is my pole on the halfway point I'm pulling it up this is coming down to the continuous rope puller right this was on a tree I have also put up a pole where I used a scaffold on the pole and I come up against this and it's coming straight down to my uh, continuous rope puller now in the case of using a scaffold I put lateral that is to the sides to keep the scaffold from shifting left or right and I also hooked on to the point that I'm lifting from right in here I took this and I ran a line and I tied off back here somewhere so that this point is anchored completely it's anchored left and right for and the call this forward it's, it's picking up so the gravity is affecting it and then to the back so that the scaffold cannot fall now the scaffold I have is five foot tall so we got one two three so I'm lifting from the ten foot level if you're following what I'm saying five foot ten foot but I've got the fifteen foot on there in case I needed it and this goes um, I bought my scaffolding from scaffold I think I think it's scaffold.com I'm gonna have to look back through my records to let you know real good company real good quality stuff but if your um, if your scaffold walkways go bad you can no, you can't replace them you have to buy brand new it's a off size plywood um, it's good stuff but unfortunately it doesn't last all that long it's made in China along with everything else right but these are the the two lifts that I've used now when I lifted the pole I used a tree going down to the continuous rope puller but I have also raised a pole using a scaffold because I didn't have a tree the option is there for you let me show you one other way to lift a uh, utility pole into place and it requires manpower and before you do this you need to fully understand what I'm about to explain all right let's look at this this is zero feet here and then one two three four four and then I skip to 12 and then to 20 because this is a 20 foot utility pole that I'm lifting when you're out here and you're picking up this at the at the very end you're picking up whatever this weight of the pole is but as you move in let's say that you move in three feet so you have three feet of pole out here this three feet let's say it's uh, 
25 pounds. That 25 pounds becomes a force multiplier. The thing is 17 feet long, right? Out here at 3 feet, if it's 20, minus 3 is 17. So you have a tremendous amount of weight on this thing. And as you're picking this thing up, if you're trying to do this by hand, and it can be done, but you need manpower, and a lot of it, and the guys better have eaten their spinach. This pole is going to get, the higher you lift it, the heavier it's going to get because the, um, the center of effort is going to start sliding out this way. As, as the fulcrum, which is your lift point, moves this way, the center of effort comes this way. And what can happen is that the pole can literally pop into the air on this end and come down and it can hurt you. I've seen this happen where people are trying to set up antennas. I've seen it where people are trying to put up poles for some stupid reason. You can get hurt. What they generally do, and they're going to, going to be successful, is they're going to dig this down whatever depth, you know, five feet or whatever it is. And then they're going to cut a path down in here, this way, five feet. And then they're going to start lifting up, and then it works better. Um, we could get into the uh, needles in, in, uh, in ancient Egypt and how they lifted them. They did the same thing. They built ramps and then had these down angles. They'd drag the thing out, then they'd start standing it up and use ropes to pull it up. That's how they built those ancient uh, needles. However, when you're doing this stuff, you need to really understand what you're doing. There's a lot of videos on physics of lifting poles into place by hand. People get hurt doing this. 